Yo! So there has been so much talk, so much hype, a general enthusiasm around all of these LLMs since the launch of GPT-5. I've never seen so many people talking about it, people disappointed about 4.0 being removed, it then being added back, but through all of this noise we've been trying to test GPT-5 to see whether it's actually capable of doing research level maths. We've tested it for research, for building simulations, for teaching and so much more and it's proven itself to be incredibly powerful. I mean just as a recap, we built a simulation for what's called the Room and Zeta function with no prior experience in JavaScript or web development in HTML. And it looks absolutely incredible. I mean, just think if you're a teacher, you could vibe code a simulation for a lesson within 10 minutes or less. And so regardless of its capability of doing research level problems, these models have already proven themselves to be unbelievably useful. And today we're gonna to go into even further detail as to how these models are affecting research in mathematics. Now, something that's very important to keep in mind is that my workflow when actually doing research doesn't just involve sort of a question and an answer. You know, you're using all kinds of different programming languages. One big one in the field of maths is called Wolfram Mathematica. It's a piece of software that lets you do symbolic kind of maths, so manipulating symbols, simplifying equations, and all kinds of stuff like that. And the first time I ever saw this piece of software was in a meeting with an academic where he was running through some of his research with me, and I just remember thinking that he was a bit like a magician uh, because you can just explain stuff so quickly if you know how to type the language. Of course you have to read papers and know which papers to read which can definitely be accelerated by these LLMs but even just doing pages and pages of algebra is something that although ChatGPT can do to some extent it isn't fully capable of doing it to the same extent that I think you need in order to tackle research level problems. But there's been some huge improvements to GPT-5 and this was the case even for GPT-03 and for Gemini where it seems that they're now allocating CPU compute to a query to assist in the LLM inference process. So you might have a question where in a way it needs to test the answer by creating a Python script, it will then code it and then run it presumably on some form of CPU, whether that's an ARM data center CPU core or like AMD EPIC, it can then actually give you an answer and it will implement that into the normal large language model response. Although this was implemented some time ago, I remember vividly this being a step function like increase in terms of the model's capabilities in answering research level problems. And when we actually consider the workflow of a research level mathematician, it would be really nice to see them be able to implement things like Wolfram Mathematica because GPT-5 and Gemini can already program in these languages. If they had access to actually using the code and running it, I think they'd be way more capable at solving these research level problems if they can be assisted through Mathematica programming. There have been so many problems where ChatGPT has helped me program something in Mathematica, especially something where it's kind of numeric or you have to do some sort of combinatorial process in order to evaluate something. For example, I needed a function that would generate uh, S by S matrices <laughs> whose rows summed up to K. And actually the process of doing this you know, in programming isn't 100% obvious. Obviously, if you have a lot of practice in Python, you can generate these quite straightforwardly, but as someone with fairly limited experience programming initially, it really helped me pick up these languages and convert between them. Because if I've written a piece of code in Wolfram Mathematica, ChatGPT can actually translate to MATLAB or Python, which is huge because if you don't have any experience in Python, that it would take you ages to be able to convert from one language to another. You can then study the code that it gives you in Python to try and learn Python even faster than you would otherwise. You don't have to spend so much time learning aspects that aren't super relevant to your specific research problem. You can still learn the parts which are more relevant and eventually you start to get a better understanding of how to program in these languages. And of course, if you give it a difficult enough research problem, there's absolutely no way it will even give an answer that's marginally useful because it's so far from being able to answer them. For example, you could give it the Riemann hypothesis. Of course, it's not going to be able to answer this. But when I think about how I actually do research, there are so many little tasks that ChatGPT can help massively accelerate. It's really unequivocal in that sense. Accelerating these little subsections of that research is incredibly useful. For example, there's been an area of maths that's come up when doing my research, which is called symmetric function theory. This shows up a lot in quantum physics. The details are really not important, but what I do think is important is here we're considering a sub-problem to my research. It's not kind of the large end goal problem to the research. It's a sub-problem that's kind of occurred, which I need to kind of work with, which is related to symmetric function theory. And it's it's a problem which anyone who works in the field might be able to estimate that ChatGPT would have a chance at solving. And what's amazing is if you construct a prompt which gives enough information about the problem, you can get an answer which actually teaches you so much about the problem itself. So in this case, I had a symmetric function which satisfied some kind of given structural properties. And I've basically asked ChatGPT to see that if you assume that these properties are true, can you find an expression for a specific symmetric function called the Vandermonde determinant. This Vandermonde determinant, if you like, is a bit 
like if you had a cloud of electron particles and as they get closer they start to repel and this van der Mond object basically encapsulates this repulsion. How it does so maybe isn't worth going into too much detail for anyone who knows because the probability density given a state at certain positions will then vanish because the van der Mond will go to zero when two positions are equal. Don't want this channel to become like super rigorous maths but I want this channel to be able to explain you know in metaphors uh, what exactly I am working on in a way that I think is basically encapsulating exactly what I'm doing it just doesn't have the equations or the mathematical rigor. So I bounced ideas back and forth with ChatGPT for well over an hour and a half and it actually gave me a lot of insight. You see it introduces a lot of ideas which I hadn't seen before called the resultant and some other things like that. I then went to learn about these on Wikipedia and overall the answer it's given me has helped me a lot to then come up with more ideas which I can then implement and then ask ChatGPT again to see if it can work on those ideas that I've just worked on. So clearly it's not autonomous but it takes my research from being something that I'd be doing on my own with a book to something where I'm almost having a conversation with something, bouncing ideas back and forth, and it can run with them and give some suggestions regardless of whether they're good or bad. I actually use this as an opportunity to give the same prompt to Gemini, and to be honest, I don't normally have much luck with Gemini in my area, but actually this answer was really nice, and it's given me some more ideas based on the whole conversation that I had with GPT-5 yesterday. The answer that ChatGPT gave, it really did teach me so much about this specific area of symmetric function theory, and it was correct in what it had done. You can quite literally go onto Wolfram Mathematica, run a randomized sample in which these structural properties are true, and you can check whether ChatGPT's algebra was correct or not, and it comes out right every single time. I really can't stress enough how incredible this is, and it really does blow me away every single time I see it happen in a different context. Sure, there are contexts where the answer is really bad from ChatGPT, basically not very helpful at all, but does it really matter if like 50 to 60% of the time it actually gives you an answer that you can learn something from? It doesn't need to be able to complete the task completely from start to finish. You know, if you think of the task as going from A to B, the fact that it can give some clarity on some sub part of that problem is incredibly useful. And there's no doubt that this is why there's so much hype around these models, because they're so powerful. Like I said in the first video, I have two friends in the semiconductor industry, and we talk basically every day about some problems that ChatGPT has helped to solve. And the simulations that we've made in the last two videos, in my opinion, are really, really good. I think even if these tools remained the same capability, I would still be subscribed to them, I think, indefinitely. I guess you would hope over time that the cost would go down if this was the case. But if the models even keep getting like 5 to 10% better every year, they're going to get really good. And we also know that the capability of these models can be a lot higher if they allocate more inference compute. You know, when they're tackling these Olympiad type problems, of course they're going to be allocating the highest amount of compute to these problems where they can then get this kind of badge that says that they've solved some of the most difficult maths problems given to humans. They're not going to be allocating this level of compute to some random guy like me asking some random question to do with random matrix theory because it would be incredibly expensive and it would take absolutely ages for the answer to come out. 